Hey traders, Killstokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. Thank you, as always, for joining me. The support has been amazing. The show is growing. The ideas are flowing. And it's just been a great first year for the show. We were in the live trading room earlier today and we were watching the market around the same time Mario Draghi was speaking and the ECB press conference was going on. And during the ECB press conference, well, I am not actively involved in any trades, especially from a day trader's perspective. And this was something that I learned over time, really the hard and expensive way. I used to trade as usual, right? I started off as a trader who, well, let's, let's put it this way. First and foremost, I believe that as a trader, you have to have an underlying philosophy in the market. And that's going to be, in general, technical or fundamental, right? Fundamental is news and, and all that fun stuff. Technicals is charts and all that wacky stuff, right? Now, I'm not saying that you can't use both together. Um, as an investor, a little bit more easier than a trader. You can certainly use a fundamental bias and use technicals to enter the trade. You can certainly have a technical bias to enter the trades and use your fundamental knowledge to really expand that trade. Many, many of you guys have heard me talk about home run trades before. But in general, I think you have to have one that is the key decision maker. What do you value the most, the technicals or the fundamentals? And when I first started off as a young and dumb trader, I was purely in the technicals and I had the mindset that fundamentals are evil. They don't matter. Anyone that trades fundamentals, again, trade, not invest. Anyone that trades fundamentals is crazy. And I put it in my mind that I do not care one lick about fundamentals. I'm a technical trader. All of my testing, all of my uh, practice has come strictly on the charts, paying no regard to any type of news. Therefore, when I trade live, I shall ignore all types of news as well. And over the years, I learned some lessons about doing so, especially as a day trader that you may not need to trade off of news, but it is important to know when news is coming out because news events, right? They cause a lot of panic in the market, right? Greed or fear. It, it caused the market to have a lot of emotions. And by the market, I mean the participants because the market is just a visual representation of all of the actions being taken by everyone involved, right? And being stubborn lost me a lot of money, just trading through this, trading through that, having good trades that were kind of thrown out of whack as the market bounces up and down and left and right. And eventually I decided on a few, a few news events that I would not trade. I would simply uh, stay out of the market saying, hey, I'm going to wait till the, till the kind of the, the storm has settled. Um, and then I'll come back in and redo my analysis. And one of those news events is the ECB press conference. And that's what we had today. So as we were in a live room watching the kind of the madness from the ECB, right? They talked about lowering expectations, right? Today was the day they, they officially announced the end of the quantitative easing, which we knew was going to happen, but they also kind of um, had lower projections on what they expected in 2018 and 2019. And we saw an initial sell-off uh, on the euro pairs. And we we're watching it on a range bar chart, just, uh, you know, doing a lesson for our traders about, hey, on a regular uh, minute based chart, whatever like that, whether it's a 15 or a five or a 60, you're gonna get this one big candle and you really can't take action off of it. But if you go down to a range bar chart, which is a different type of chart, you can actually have a better look at the moves within the moves and you can have opportunities to catch these news based um, movements if that's something you wanna do. And we're looking at a chart Price had rallied down and started to put in a formation. I said, you know what You know what this is, guys? This is a descending channel. This is a falling channel. I wouldn't be surprised if price gave us a retracement. And we went on to the next pair, and lo and behold, a few minutes later, we came back to the chart and said, hey, see, what did I tell you? The market did exactly what I expected it. Now, I tell this story not to brag and say, hey, I'm this awesome trader. I predicted it because I didn't trade it. I had no intentions of trade it. If, if you showed me it 10 times uh, again and I knew it was going to happen, I still wouldn't trade it. Well, I suppose if I knew what was going to happen, I would trade it. But you guys get the point. The fact is, I was explaining to our traders the difference between, I guess, the importance of being able to identify 
different formations in the market, even if you're not going to use it. Because yes, you may recognize it, you may not be able to trade it because of news, or you may see it at a, a different point in the market that's not of interest to you and you won't be able to trade it then. But every once in a while, you're going to have that specific formation occur at a specific level that you're paying attention to. And that could be the slight edge that you need to get involved in the market. And as traders, I still don't think you guys truly understand, right? We're playing a game of edges and the edge is very, very, very slight. The difference is good traders, consistently profitable traders are able to consistently exploit that slight edge over and over again in the market while being good risk managers. And it reminded me of a quote that I put out today. Now, for you guys that shamelessly follow me on social media, thank you, by the way, um, you guys know I do a quote of the day. And today's quote of the day was from Steve Burns. He said, traders most closely resemble a batter in baseball. Regardless of how good the player is, hitting and getting on base is only accomplished less than a third of the time. The batter must follow their process, knowing when to swing and when to let the ball pass for the best chance of getting a hit. Two strikeouts in a game are quickly forgotten if the third at bat results in a grand slam home run. And there's a lot of truth to this statement, right? Trading and sports go hand in hand, especially golf and baseball. But there's so much truth to this statement where so many people think we require this massive win percentage. We have to win 90% of the time, 80% of the time, 70% of the time to be successful. Yes, that, that feeds our ego. It makes us feel good. Don't get me wrong, but it's not necessary. The truth is most of the best traders of all time have a very low win percentage. I'm talking between 20 and 40%. That doesn't mean you have to be there, but just to give you some perspective on what's doable. And the difference between a consistently profitable trader, some of the best of the best traders and the traders that perhaps struggle is that the good traders trade their opportunities. And, and this reminded me of another quote from, uh, I believe it was Peter Brand. I read a long time ago. It says, um, uh, what was it? Uh, I probably have it somewhere in my computer here. Uh, there we go. It says, look, it says vitally important for a trader is to know his or her pitch or kind of like a sweet spot. If you do not know your pitch, you should not be trading. And putting these two quotes together, right? Here's how I look at it. For you guys that haven't played baseball, here's how it works, right? Pitchers in baseball are typically throwing between, uh, throwing this ball between 70 and 100 miles per hour. And your job as a batter is to identify the pitch and of course swing and attempt to hit it before it gets to you in, you know, whatever, a, a hundredth of a second. So what you have to do is as the ball leaves the pitcher's hand, you have to look at the stitching, you have to look at the rotation of it and make your best guess on what the pitch is. Then you have to actually wait to see if the pitch is in your, uh, in your strike zone or your, your hitting zone. And it's a, it's a fairly complicated act that you must do very, very quickly. This is why baseball players spend so much time in the batting cage, right? Repetition, 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 so they can make those decisions fairly quickly. Sound familiar, right? Same thing with trading. We spend so much time in our batting cage, which is either, you know, on the charts, back testing on the charts, putting extra hours in after your trading day, right? Repetition, 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 practice, practice, practice. That way, when the opportunity comes, we're ready to hit it or trade it, I guess, take advantage of it. And, you know, what I always tell traders to do is practice making predictions. Practice making predictions. Look at random charts. Practice seeing what the market does before it makes a move, right? And keep track of that and look at it over and over again. And this doesn't mean you have to be actively trading these things, right? You don't have to be in the market. You don't have to have any money uh, at risk, whether it's live money or demo trading. Just make a game for it. Put yourself in that batter's box. Start looking for things, practicing, making predictions, practicing, making predictions, practicing, making predictions, because you're training your eye that way. Then, right, over time, as you gain experience, you're going to see the same things that you practice live in the market. Now, you may be able, you may be able to identify the pitch, but the pitch may not be in your strike zone. So you may, you may be able to see the pitch come out of the pitcher's hand. You may be able to say, you know what? This is a slider. 
I know what it's going to do. It's going to wiggle inside, but it's not over the plate, so you're not going to swing. And, and a uh, comparison to that would be it's not on a uh, it's not at a level that you want to trade. So you let it go. You, you take your ball and you do that over and over again. Sometimes you even take strikes. Sometimes you see something, you know what it's going to do. It's at a level, but it doesn't quite give you the entry reason you need. And that's a strike down the middle. And that's OK. What you're waiting for is your pitch. You're waiting for everything to line up. You're waiting for the pitcher to throw you something that you identify way in advance so you know what pitch is coming. Then you're waiting for that pitch to come right down the middle of the plate, right? So it's at a level in the market where you know you're able to take advantage of it. And then you just tee off on that bad boy. You tee off on that bad boy, right? And guess what? It may not win. Does that matter? No, because if you're taking the right measures as far as risk management, keeping a consistent risk reward where in in my opinion, I'm not a trend following trader. So in my opinion, I want to earn more on my trades than what I lose. I, I guess you, there, there are ways to trade if you have a very high win percentage where you don't have to do that. But in my opinion, I always want to keep my wins bigger than my losses. That way I can get that hit one out of every three times or for me, more realistically, it's about one out of every two times. I'm about a 50, 55% trader. But the point is, I don't have to get a hit each and every time I'm at bat to make profit. I can be that baseball player that gets a hit one third of the time and still gets a Hall of Fame vote, right? And what that does to you psychologically is amazing, right? Most of the pressure that we put on ourselves as traders comes because we think we need to win. We put pressure on us to win. I have to win. I have to win. I have to win. When you know and understand that you don't have to win more than you lose and you're still going to be profitable, the pressure to do things you're not supposed to do, to, the pressure to reach a certain goal is, is no longer there. It, it's, it actually becomes quite easy. It's very easy to sit back and say, hey, I can lose six out of 10 trades and still make money. Zero pressure. And the less pressure there is, the less chance you have of self-sabotaging yourself. And the less chance you have of self-sabotaging yourself, the better chance you have of remaining consistently profitable.